After 100 years of research and education in wine, food, and beer, UC Davis is still searching for perfection, like the dusty bottles of Cabernet that have grown musty in its decades-old cellar this premier university is moving ahead quickly into the 21st sustainable century. One foot ten, three quarter to the east. UC Davis's prestigious wine and food science programs are about to move into new green processing facilities at the Robert Mondavi Institute for Wine and Food Science. This is a beer for sipping with reverence and respect, I think. Students who make wine will work alongside those who produce beer, and they will be joined in the same building by others who are working to design new foods in what is the largest food science program in the country. Water is so short in California, and, and winemakers use a lot of water, mostly for cleaning. So we really have to train our students to be thinking about how much water they're using. The students are often the source of new ideas new product ideas, new product designs that we can start to research in our new facility. And what we're going to do now is um, make sure that our program is dedicated to all the relevant things that are going on in brewing. And those things include environmental issues. These three academic powerhouses are seasoned and yet energized for what the future holds. They are particularly excited about this 34,000 square foot facility that is expected to be completed in the fall. It will include the brewing and food science laboratory and the teaching and research winery. This building is designed to meet LEED Platinum construction standards, the highest granted by the U.S. Green Building Council. LEED stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design, and it has become the hallmark of sustainability in the architecture and construction world. Let's go inside and take a virtual tour. Once inside the doors, a large fermentation room will hold both small and large fermenters that will be used for teaching and research. All will be connected through a wireless control system that will precisely measure temperature. State-of-the-art control systems in all parts of the winery will provide for expanded research capabilities. In addition, a special collection room will store rare and valuable commercial wines. Across the hallway is the new brewery, which will showcase the importance of brewing as a complex, sophisticated process. And finally, the General Foods Processing Plant will handle a broad spectrum of food products, including tomatoes, olives, and more. The processing plant is built to food-grade standards, meaning the foods made here can be eaten. The facility's milk processing lab is specially designed for cheese and other dairy products. Roger Bolton, the Stephen Sinclair Scott Endowed Chair in Enology at UC Davis, has been instrumental in working with senior project manager Julianne Nola on the green systems that this building will contain. This building, uh, with an additional facility that we're planning, aims to be completely self-sustainable in energy from on-site generation, completely self-sustainable in water from rainwater capture, the zero carbon building, not a carbon neutral building, and a lead plaque building. And there is no equivalent to that today, and I don't believe in the next five or 10 years you will see a building anywhere in the world built that meets those standards. Supported completely by private donations, this $19 million complex is being recognized by industry leaders. Robert Buller, the vice president of sustainability for Kendall Jackson Wines, says the new UC Davis facility provides industry with ways to become even more sustainable. It gives industry a great opportunity to work hand in hand with the university to help develop those technologies, to test them in the lab environment, and then to bring that technology out to the commercial environment and see how well it performs and validate it. Bowler says industry must embrace change. I think a lot of people think sustainability is just about the environment and have this image of, of people kind of being tree huggers. Well, you know, sustainability in large part means conserving, not using something. And not using something means you're not paying for something. It's just a smart business. It makes good business sense for Sierra Nevada Brewing Company in Chico to be sustainable as well. For years, it has cut waste by recycling, conserving, and generating on-site electricity with solar panels. Owner Ken Grossman says students who graduate from a sustainable brewing program have an advantage. Well, I mean, we've done a lot of things, and, I, and we don't use the term becoming green. We, you know, we use or we view it as something that we need to do as a manufacturer to minimize our consumption of resources and to try to be as efficient as, as we can. 
Um, but we've done a wide range of things from water conservation, uh, lots of energy conservation projects. Charles Bamford, the Anheuser-Busch Endowed Professor of Malting and Brewing, says one major issue facing the industry is making beer more efficiently. The two big issues then are how to make beer last longer in the trade, uh, but also going back to the brewery, how do you make the beer by cutting down on uh, the use of some of the raw materials? For example, a, um, a well-run brewery is going to use about three, three and a half times more water than ends up in the beer. How can you get that figure even lower? Bamford says he expects commercial breweries to test new ways of making beer right here at UC Davis. Likewise, the $35 million a year California food processing industry is looking to UC Davis for expertise as it relates to efficient, sustainable practices. When you look at communities in California where processing plants are located, Merced, Turlock, you go up and down the valley, in almost every case, it's water use, it's water effluent, it's the quality of air emissions. That's what the industry is facing. And until they can adapt to the kind of technology that we'll be demonstrating here, I think they're always going to be kind of on the wrong end of that curve and struggling to keep up with the latest regulations. I think this is will put us not only make, it, make the industry not only compliant, but demonstrating the very latest cutting-edge technologies that can lead us into the future. Commercial olive oil producer Jim Viseri of West Coast Products says the food industry is research dependent on UC Davis. You know, UC Davis is, you know, I, I cut my teeth on a lot of uh, processing and, and oil techniques. I learned a lot when I first got involved in this business approximately six years ago. They're a terrific group down there and uh, like I said, they're invaluable source of knowledge to us. Well, I think they're setting the standard on, on green building, green construction, with all the students coming through Davis, and really wineries, winemakers from around the world look to Davis, UC Davis, as a leader, a leadership position in terms of innovation. And I think this platinum certified winery will, will prove that, will encourage that. Chancellor Linda Katehi says UC Davis has become the global leader in sustainable related research. The building just behind me is the newest building on our campus and it does really provide a very strong indication of our commitment to sustainability. It's a very symbolic gesture to really indicate the many years of excellent work that we have done in this particular area. The fact that this facility is funded entirely from private support demonstrates a partnership between the industry and the university in attaining the sustainable goals for the future. Paul Fotenauer reporting from Davis.